today we are going to see about a beautiful topic called uh, robotics i hope uh, many um, participants might have done lot of projects in this uh, robotic platform uh, especially after the introduction of this arduino and uh, all those platforms na so the programming and uh, the modules everything has become easier and easily you can able to connect and you can do lot of programming and lot of robotic applications you can do many people could have done that so in this session what i am focusing on is uh, i'm just going to give you uh, some introduction for the newbies and also i'm going to give you some challenges and tips for the intermediates so those who have already done robotics kind of projects i'm just give you i'm going to give you some challenges and tips to you okay so starting from what is robotics and where that we, that means where what is the application of it and how it works and what are all the different types of robotics are there and finally the tips this is all the topics i am going to cover today so i hope uh, it will be a great session for you in to say in simple terms what is robotics is some uh, something like it is going to assist humans okay it is going to help the human beings it should be it it is not like you know uh, the robotics is not like a sophisticated one kind of thing okay the application should be like uh, it should be assisting the humans and should be helping the humans and it should be you know keeping the humans safe so these are the key points we have to keep in mind before heading into any robotics kind of researches i'm going to show you some applications okay i'm going to show you some applications that many people could have seen before but this will be very much useful for you uh, this will be an eye opener for everybody so starting from okay i hope everybody could have uh, seen this particular computer this is a computer from 1950s okay so this computer has been introduced by ibm okay ibm and uh, if you can see this uh, size of this particular computer it's it's completely like a room size computer right and you can able to see lot of switches and lot of you know uh, analog tuners or something like that right so these switches are nothing but for giving the input and output can you get my point so say for example if i want to calculate something if i want to add two numbers or three numbers together what i will do is i will convert that particular number into a binary so ones and zeros we all aware of right so we have to convert that particular number into a binary and we have to give it in terms of these switches only if you press the switch it will be one if you release the switch it will be a zero something like that we need to press all these switches here and we have to calculate a small two numbers okay so it was very difficult in the time of 1950s but it was a bigger invention which was uh, been there okay so what is the change which you are having now okay so if you if you compare with this particular computer now you have computer in your mobile right so i call my smartphone as a computer only i want uh, because the smartphone is not only used for calling purposes right we have lot of other you know features also has, has been added advanced features has been added in your in your uh, smartphones also so now this much big ibm computer has become a very small computer in your pockets okay what is the reason behind that okay we have to think of that particular thing okay so the reason behind that is nothing but the transistors okay the invention of transistors is the one which has lead to that much big invention okay so say for example why this much technological change has happened because of these transistors that we have to analyze first okay so say for example so he is the jordan moore many people could have learned uh, law called moore's law right in your uh, ec or triple e subjects and all you could have learned about moore's law so what does this moore's law states for every 2 years the number of usage of transistors na so that will be doubled say for example today i am using uh, around 1000 transistors okay so say i am in late 1940s or so so i am using only 1000 transistors now okay in 2 years or so what will happen is it will be doubled so it will be 2000 okay in the next 2 years it will be 4000 or something like that so it will be keep on doubling when the year goes by so this is what the moore's law and he is the one who introduced this particular moore's law so why i say uh, stay about this particular moore's law is because if you see this curve okay so this is the exact moore's law stated okay so if you can see the x axis shows the 
years so starting from 1969 okay so there is a year uh, manipulation you can see every two years it will be changed and in the y axis you can see the number of transistors that is used inside an ic okay so now you can see his prediction okay the murslas prediction was okay until 2007 okay until 2007 his prediction was very perfect and it is working very good but see after that what happens your curve suddenly shoots up okay especially in the year from 2011 to 2019 okay so the the curve has shooted up to a longer ranges now it was in lakhs okay the transistors used inside an ic was in lakhs but now what happened it was in billions okay inside an ic you can able to incorporate billions of transistors inside an ic okay so what is the bigger you know deal with this transistors what if what if you increase the transistors how it increases the technology many could have have this doubt in you okay so the reason behind that is can you tell me what is the first device that is formed in a in a ic or in a electronics you know what is the first device which is formed that is nothing but diode okay so it is formed with the help of some p n sand so you know what is p right p n junction so p is nothing but the what p and n are the two forms of silicon you can see on the uh, chemical form okay there are p type and n type okay when combining these two things we form a diode and what happens if you combine these diodes together there comes your transistors okay there comes your transistors so you will be having one extra gate over there so using that base terminal you can able to switch on or switch off that particular transistor and you can give one and zero okay that ones and zeros are now we are calling it as binary okay so this transistors are the one which is the beginning which is going to be the base for everything base for whatever the technology which we are using so if we have some group of transistors with me i can form any device say for example i have two transistors with me i can form an and gate can you get my point so if i have two more transistors i can form an or gate or something like that okay so from the gates what i can do i can form flip flops okay if you see the internal structure of a flip flop there will be four nand gates or two nand gates or nor gates you know what is an universal gate right so using those universal gates you can form any flip flops there so if we have a flip flop so flip flop is nothing but a one bit memory storage right so if i have a group of flip flops i can make a memory i can make registers so you have lot of registers right in an embedded system if you could have seen so you have some general purpose registers and uh, special function registers also okay so using these registers what i can do i can form the memory so your ram and rom so rams and roms are nothing but the group of registers okay the group of registers are in turn what group of flip flops see so these flip flops are in turn what group of gates okay so whatever the devices which is having inside your chip okay inside your ic everything is a transistor okay everything each and every part of your ic is a transistor it is fabricated in such a manner that you can incorporate billions and billions of transistors inside a single ic okay so if i want a floating point unit in my ic okay in most of the arm based uh, processors there will be a floating point unit in it okay so if i want to form that i need to group some of the what transistors together okay so i i need to group some of the transistors together and i need to create that fpu so if i want to add some more future inside my ic i need to group some more transistors there so that is how whatever the feature which you are experiencing now in your smartphones or in your laptops it is because of grouping these transistors together so because of this much amount of advancements which has happened because of that only we are in this era of robotics okay especially i won't say robotics alone i need to incorporate along with one more term called artificial intelligence because now just robotics will not sounds better because you know the robotics have already become saturated in the market in most of the industries even in household uh, kind of applications also many robotic kind of platforms have been introduced so that is why i am taking these two domains together now so this is an amazon warehouse okay so this will be in acres the area will be in acres actually so here what you can see is you can see some multiple number of shelves over there 
right so whatever the things you are ordering on the online so you are opening the amazon website and you are ordering some packages there right so these packages will be coming and it will be stored in this particular warehouse only okay so this warehouse will be consisting of multiple shelves so you can see there right so these shelves are nothing but okay so these shelves are movable okay these are locomotive in nature it can move from place to place and there are robots which assist these shelves so you can see some orange color areas which is under these shelves right so these orange devices are nothing but the robots which is capable of carrying these shelves wherever it is necessary so whenever you are ordering a package these packages will be maintained so okay this will be maintained in these kind of shelves and all these counts okay all these counts and all the weights of the packages everything all the details of that particular package will be maintained by this particular robots only it is not maintained by any humans and all can you get my point so these robots are the ones who is maintaining all the inventories which is having inside this particular warehouse okay you can see lakhs and lakhs of uh, shelves something like this inside this warehouse okay so these uh, shelves will be keep on moving here and there without any collision and all okay so how this is happening so without any collision these lakhs some number of shelves are moving here and there right so how it is happening so the reason behind that is there are some intelligent technologies okay there are some intelligent algorithms which has come into the uh, you know uh, market now so using those things what they can do is they can monitor each and every what each and every shelves there each and every robots there using some surveillance camera or something like that we can able to plan the path of this particular robots where it should move okay where it should move where it should come out okay so from a point to b point okay i can draw the path and i can give for the particular robot so all these advancements have come especially in the bigger companies like amazon okay now they are using it in a better manner and next you can see this is the largest you know uh, this is the biggest version of that particular shelf this is simply like if you want to navigate any container okay especially in shipping logistics and all if you want to move a container from one place to uh, another place okay from a to b you can use these kind of giant robots okay the thing which you are seeing here is nothing but a robot okay so it is holding a container there and it is going to ship this container container to a particular area okay so this is an autonomous as well as it can be programmed in a manual manner also there can be a person who can able to control this particular robot also can you get my point so this is another application i want to show you so because many people are having in mind that the, if it is robotics it should be of a you know like a asimo kind of thing you know what is asimo right it's a humanoid kind of robot okay many people imagine robotics as like that okay it is not uh, you know mandatory that the robot has to be a humanoid it can be of any form okay like which one i was showing you now okay so that is the thing i want to show you and the second thing is the police bot okay this is another bot why i want to show this particular uh, robot is the this is a you know masterpiece because it can able to run at a speed of 28.3 miles per hour okay so who, you know who is usain bolt right he is the uh, fastest man on the earth right so it can able to you know run faster than him so it is 28.3 miles per hour so the name of this particular uh, robot is cheetah okay so why i want to show you this is because how fast your processor has to react at that speed that we have to imagine because you can see lot of wirings which is running here and there in this particular robot right so you will be having lot of motors there so for legs and uh, all this head movement and all there will be lot of motors there right so consider it is running at a speed of 28.3 miles per hour and suddenly if something collapses okay suddenly it hits on a stone or something like that what will happen the stability of that particular robot will be collapsed very soon because at that speed it will be very much uh, difficult to control this particular robot right so imagine how much fast your processor has to be okay in order to control all these motors all the sensors which is having on the okay all the actuators okay so your processor has to react very quickly when there is any sudden oscillation in the particular cheetah can you get my point so that is why i want to show you this slide it is not that easy to create that much faster robots okay nowadays it is very much because if it is a plain road there is no issue 
if it is say for example it is a damaged road especially like in a disaster management areas and all the roads will be damaged in nature in those areas and all if you want to use these kind of robots then definitely the these kind of processors should be very much fast enough to take a decision otherwise it will fall down and there will be another assist to you know in order to lift this particular robot okay so these kind of advancements are coming in so the processor speed and everything is boosting up nowadays so robotics has become very much easier to carry out okay and one more important thing is there is one sensor okay there should be some sensor in this particular uh, robot which should assist the position of that particular current position of that particular robot because when it is trying to fall okay immediately a sensor has to intimate that particular processor to Uh, intimate that particular process that I am going to fall. Please take some uh, necessary steps to uh, you know make me stand something like that. So those kind of sensor also is there. Then these sensors are very much good reactive in nature. Okay, it will be very much quick in response. Okay, so those kind of sensors also being implemented in this particular robot. And the third thing is night scope robot. many people could have heard about this night scope if not please google it so this is one of the surveillance robot which is there in the parking lots of one of the foreign country so here what it is doing is it can able to you know surveillance so say for example it is not only broadcasting what is happening before it okay using a camera it is not broadcasting along this the video to the uh, you know the to the security and all okay apart from that it can also make some decision by itself that is the beautiful point you have to uh, uh, note down so this robo can able to take the decision by itself whether there is some bad things is going to happen or not say for example it, if it is uh, you know if it is seeing the seeing the environment say for example uh, it is seeing some car and that car is going to be get theft by some of the person okay immediately if this particular uh, camera is seeing that particular action it can able to do some assumption whether he is the owner of the car or he is trying to steal that particular car or something like that it can able to make some decisions based on the artificial intelligence algorithm which is been implemented okay so these kind of uh, analysis are also been implemented in these kind of robotics okay especially in surveillance and all in previous cases these surveillance robots are just like you know transmitting video signals to the you know security and the only the security has to do some uh, necessary steps to come and uh, you know uh, clean all those things so here these kind of robots are having the intelligence to take the decision by themselves immediately it can able to you know send the necessary warning signals or alarm signals to that particular uh, area and it can able to alert the particular area okay so those kind of advancements are coming in especially in surveillance kind of robots and you can see here this is a combat drone so this is a combat drone so it is having the advancement like it can able to launch the missile okay whatever to whichever the position okay say for example i want to move this robot to a particular position uh, i i can feed the latitude and longitude of that particular position in this particular robot immediately what it can do is it can fly off to that particular position and it can able to launch the missile and it can able to come back okay so those kind of uh, robots are being used in particular defenses okay defense kind of application also you have lot of robotics this is a air based robot likewise you have lot of robots in land based also this is one of the robot like mars okay so this is capable of carrying the amos whatever the you know uh, the weapons okay it is it can able to carry the weapon and it can able to shoot the target okay you can fix the target by yourself so the people can fix the target okay so using the algorithms it can able to if we can able to plan the path also in which path it has to move everything everything is programmed okay and it can able to identify the enemy and the you know ally okay you can able to identify we can program this particular robot to identify the military dresses of the enemies and as well as the military dresses of our allies okay and it can able to segregate the people this is what we call it as image classification and all in uh, artificial intelligence and all you have lot of algorithms for classification and detection and all so using those algorithms we can able to program this particular robot and we can make this a tougher one okay so this is another robot i want to show you and the uh, next thing is it's very simple one it's this you could have seen in lot of uh, you know advertisements and all 
So this is a pizza delivery robot introduced by Domino's, right? So this is a normal quadcopter which is capable of carrying you know pizzas and it can able to deliver it to the places wherever it is necessary. There, there they have uh, you know incorporated some of the problems. Say for example, it is not having the capability to carry the package for a longer time. The flight time of these kind of robots is very less. So you can do it for just half an hour or so. Okay, every time you have to recharge this particular uh, you know quadcopter again and again. So in order to reduce this and all, you have lot of uh, you know efforts are happening in research. Okay, especially in research, you have lot of uh, advancements are happening, especially to increase this flight time in these kind of robots. Okay, if you have time, just uh, have some look into some IEEE papers. So in most of the IEEE papers, which is related to drones and quadcopters, right? In most of the papers, they will be focusing on the flight time. There will be a curve at the end of the results. Okay, the results of the IEEE paper and all, if you can see, there will be a curve which shows the flight time. Okay, so without that, you can't make a drone. So that is very important thing. If you are doing the research, please focus on that area. The, uh, whatever the application features you are adding, that will be meaningless if the flight time is less. That is the point I want to stress you. And uh, there is one more robot which has been introduced by Domino's. So this is a road-based uh, robot. Okay, this is also very much similar to your quadcopter. It can also deliver the packages to the you know the customers. Okay, you have to enter the address or the latitude and longitude coordinates of that particular address, and you can able to deliver the packages to them in a easier manner. Okay, so this is also another one. And why I show this particular slide is because we should know. Robotics is not the one which is having you know uh, scope, which is having scope in only areas like you know industrial kind of thing, okay, like automobiles or something like that only. These robotics are used. No, it is being used even in these kind of food product companies also. That we have to keep in our mind because most of the students are losing the opportunity. They are not uh, focusing on the uh, companies like these Domino's or. Uh, Colgate kind of companies and all. Even Colgate has a unit behind them to work in artificial intelligence. You have a term called artificial intelligence toothbrush. Many people could have seen this, right? It is available in Amazon. Okay, this is introduced by Colgate actually. You know what it is capable of doing? It can able to monitor the brushing activity of the person. Okay, and it can able to say so in which area there is a possibility of a cavity. Okay, in the in the prayer itself. Okay, so if you are brushing it today, it can able to sense so which are the area you are concentrating on and which are all the areas you are leaving it. Okay, all these details are being sent to your mobile apps. Okay, and you can monitor it and it can able to send the necessary alert messages to you whenever there is a possibility of cavity. Okay, in your particular teeth. Okay, so instead of going uh, to the dentist after uh, you know pursuing a lot of pain, you can able to you know uh, take the necessary precautions in the previous uh, previous uh, cases itself. Okay, this is one of the beautiful invention by Colgate, and uh, that is what I'm saying. This Colgate, Domino's, and all like it's a food product and a, a cosmetic kind of company, right? So they are also having a unit which works on robotics and artificial intelligence that we should be aware of. Most of the students has to, uh, you know, aware of these kind of companies also. We have scope in there also. Okay, so that is why I want to show you that. And the next thing is the agriculture. I want to mention this because, especially the, those people who are having a lot of acres of land. Okay, especially in foreign countries and all, it'll be in lot of acres. It'll be in you know hectares. Okay, so in those kind of areas. Plowing and uh, you know cutting the unnecessary weeds kind of plants and all it is very much difficult to manage with the help of manual labors. Okay, so manual labors for these kind of purposes in uh, foreign countries and all is very difficult. Okay, very difficult to grab. Okay, so those kind of areas and all these kind of robots is being introduced. So this robot is capable of plowing as well as cutting the unnecessary weeds. Okay, so you can program it what to whatever the extent you want. Okay, and it is being uh, you know uh, powered with some battery or with the help of some diesel or petrol something like that. Like how you do it in your automobiles, right? So similarly, you can power this particular. Uh, robot, especially now we are focusing on solar energy also. So those kind of advancements are also coming in, and especially these kind of robots are very much expensive to buy. That also I have to mention because it will be in lakhs to buy. 
and most of the farmers especially in india cannot afford these kind of robots so especially because of this situation many students especially in my uh, area also many students are coming up with a lot of good ideas there is one more robot at the bottom right this robot is capable of sensing the ripen stage of your fruit okay especially in uh, you know in areas like uh, you know the fruit uh, cultivated area and all the people are going there and they are you know plucking out all the you know fruits and they are collecting it and they are taking it to the uh, good ones right so there will be some lakhs and lakhs of fruits ripen each and every day so if you can't if you can't able to monitor it in a right manner if it is a manual labor so in those cases and all there are some robots are available it can able to sense the ripen stage of uh, you know the fruits because if you don't uh, you know uh, plug it at the right time otherwise what will happen that fruit will be spoiled okay so if there should be in a right time it has to be plugged out so those kind of things and all is happening in especially in uh, agriculture and there are a lot of other robotics also especially for uh, testing the soil condition and all because in most of the areas before cultivating they will be using some sensors to you know sense whatever the uh, condition of that particular soil what are all the manure is needed to uh, to that particular area to grow a particular weed something like that so those kind of uh, analysis are being used by some of the robots also many student researchers are coming in so if you have time plus please go into that okay please go into that area it has a lot of scope in there okay and if it is combined with solar energy it will have a good uh, you know good impact and uh, the next slide i want to show you is the self driving truck okay so this you could have seen in a lot of you know uh, movies or in a lot of news channels and all you could have seen this particular thing under battery management systems okay so that also is one of one of the important thing whenever you are focusing on robotics because if, uh, if it is a robot if you are doing definitely it will be incorporated with some of the battery right so this battery has to be monitored regularly using some iot mechanism otherwise what will happen is if there is any you know situation okay you are sending a robot for any critical situation like into the mine or into some of the underwater kind of application and all if you are sending a robot and if you are not knowing the uh, you know condition of your battery or not knowing the condition of that particular robot from outside you can't able to you know take the necessary decision once the signal is cut uh, you can't able to regain it back okay and the next thing is the baxter robot so i want to tell you so this is one of my favorite robot this can be programmed you know dynamically what is dynamic programming here is what i would like to say is you can able to program this particular robot to do any task say for example here in this picture this robot is uh, actually you know uh, folding this particular shirt okay this is the job which is dedicated for this particular robot to fold this particular shirt okay i can use the same robot to assemble a separate unit okay say if, say for example if i want to assemble a car okay i want to assemble the windshield for a car okay i can program this particular robot accordingly it is easily programmable if you don't need to you know uh, look into some programmers or something like that okay if i i can buy this robot and i can you know uh, bring it to my company and i can program it in whatever the manner i want to work with okay so if you program it once it will start doing the job by itself okay only thing is you need to uh, look into the the precision so once you are programming it you have to check the whether the program is correct or not you have to do lot of test runs once it is okay then you can deploy it to the application so this is one of the beautiful robo which has been introduced uh, nowadays okay so if you have time just uh, google it It's, the name is baxter okay and uh, most of the industrial robots something like this so you, starting from the raw material collection and till the you know the assembly and uh, marketing part everything is been automated with the help of these kind of robots okay especially pick and place robots are having lot of scope in industries because uh, uh, these uh, pick and place robots will have a head right so there will be a hand like structure at the end okay these hand like structure can be varied so you can able to you know remove that particular part and you can able to attach it with a different tool so say for example if you take example of this particular robot so i want to show you this this is a robot which is used for construction okay so here the head is something like uh, the first picture there will be a head is something like to carry something so if you want to lift a heavy object or if you want to uh, dig into some well or something like that these kind of head can be used okay whereas if you take the second picture 
the head is changed to what some drilling kind of equipment you can able to change this head and you can able to reprogram it according to the uh, criteria whatever the application you want you can able to reprogram it this is one of the uh, you know uh, beautiful robot which has been introduced by brock okay and uh, especially in medicines okay especially in medical areas in hospitals and all you have lot of scope nowadays because of this uh, you know covid 19 situation and all in lot of hospitals they are bringing these kind of telepresence robots okay because here uh, these telepresence robots will be having one tab the tablet or ta you, you know about this uh, tablets right so you have this apple tablet and all right so that will be carried by these kind of robots and uh, the person the doctor who will be in remote places he will be interacting with that particular person okay so this interaction is happening with the help of iot okay using internet of things kind of application we can able to communicate these kind of uh, applications okay so here this robot is movable and it can be autonomous as well as manual if 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 you want to carry any medicine and if you want to uh, you know take it to some of the uh, some of the patient or something like that you can plan the path okay you can plan the path to reach that particular patient and you can able to send a robot autonomously to to that particular patient and you can deliver the medicine if you want and if you are focusing on just to speak with that particular patient you can do a manual control also so the doctor who is in the remote place will have the controller with them they can able to move their joystick and they can able to control this robot from the remote place itself and they can able to view what is happening there so there will be a camera in this particular telepresence robot also it can able to monitor the surrounding of that particular area also and it can able to send the necessary information back to the doctor okay so these kind of robots are becoming popular nowadays because this has been used in some of the hospitals only in the past years but now because of these kind of uh, you know covid covid 19 situation and all you have lot of pop you know uh, robotics kind of tele telepresence robots and all is coming out okay so please focus on focus on this area this has lot of scope and this is one of the robot for telemedicine so it is capable of uh, managing the inventory of the medicine as well as for delivering these medicines to the right uh, patients okay this is also another robot which is introduced in foreign country and uh, it, it it can be programmed it can be programmed and uh, it can able to you know you can able to feed whatever the medicine you want okay you can able to feed something like you can put the name of that medicine and you can put the quantity of the medicine to this particular robot it can immediately go to the inventory and it can able to fetch it and it can able to assist the uh, nurses who is uh, you know who is in the hospital so this is one of the beautiful robot which is uh, uh, used for telemedicine kind of application and uh, this is another robot which is a robotic arm okay so this is created you know in order to assist those who are you know the when the hands are getting cut off for the patients and all these robots can be easily fixed on to them okay this is one robot which is easily fixed to them and the control for this particular uh, you know robotic arm is being sent from the nerves okay the signals which is in the nerves right so in your uh, body there will be some neurons the brain cells we call it as right so using the signals from those nerve cells or the brain cells we can able to control this particular robotic arm i have also did some of the projects in uh, brain computer interface okay so in one, one of the uh, product uh, we have did this brain computer interface for controlling uh, some of the electrical appliances and all so in those cases and all we will be having some uh, eeg caps okay you know what is a eeg cap right you will be having lot of electrodes on it and it is capable of fetching the electrical signals from our brain okay so those uh, caps are been uh, introduced on to the patient head and what whenever the patient thinks of lifting a some of the object okay like how you do it on a normal arm right so similar manner if he thinks of lifting an object or something like that immediately this kind of robot can able to move according to the thoughts which is having in our mind okay this is one of the beautiful robotic arm which has been introduced in uh, uh, some of the hospitals okay so this uh, having lot of research scope these kind of robots are having lot of research scope if you have time please uh, look into this and uh, so this is a neuralink device so you can see uh, a small chip over here right so this is a chip which will be having some n number of electrodes in it okay so especially for brain computer interface kind of application and all you need lot of electrodes to be placed on your head right so it will be very much clumsy for the patient and all it will be very much clumsy and every time you can't able to carry those kind of uh, eeg caps everywhere it cannot be commercialized 
okay especially if you want to learn about diseases it is okay or if you want to use these kind of uh, you know bca kind of robots for uh, you know external purpose and all it is very much difficult to use it okay so in order to avoid that what he did is he have made this particular chip and in this chip you can see this b path right there will be a section called b so in that b section you will be having lot of small hair like structures there will be very much smaller okay it will be in mm okay so these uh, uh, you know these uh, hairs are being planned to implant uh, planned to be implanted inside the scalp of the patient okay like how you do the hair uh, you know transplant and all right so you will be implanting it with the hair. artificial hairs will be implanted on the patient head right similarly these electrodes are also can be implanted inside the scalp of the patient and they can able to grasp all the necessary information from that particular brain okay and uh, uh, they are also given uh, you know uh, there will be usb provision also is given to in that particular chip in order to collect the information out okay this is one of the futuristic idea and uh, i don't know because uh, these kind of ideas are coming you know in short duration because in 2000s and in uh, 1995 and all these kind of ideas are because are in the research level okay it will be in very much new and very much in a research level kind of thing but now he has developed the ic itself so now you can see how much advancements we are in okay how much technology advancements have gone because of these uh, you know Uh, technologies okay so this ic can be implanted on the patient and the patient will not know whether he is carrying it or not because it is not very heavy or it is not having any clumsy kind of you know uh, devices uh, over there so it will implanted very easily so for implanting this and all we need some robotics there because uh, to implant these electrodes and all we need to focus on the right area of your brain okay we should focus on the correct area if you are uh, fixing these electrodes on a wrong area you can't able to grasp any good information from them okay so this is uh, this neural link can be implemented with the help of some surgery robots okay especially in hospitals and all now this surgical robots are becoming very much popular especially for uh, you know uh, operating for operations for carrying out the surgeries and operations and all these kind of robots are being used because for the precision because if you want to cut a skin or something like that it should be in a precise manner right so if you have programmed your robot uh, in a such a manner it will be programming it all day okay it can be programming for longer time it should it will not change its program and all it will be very much steady in nature so in order to do that these kind of surgical robots are coming into market for a longer time so for this implanting these electrodes and all in especially neuralink they are planning to create these kind of surgical robots okay in order to fix the position of these electrodes on the brain so this is also beautiful application if you have time just uh, google it this i want to show you and uh, this i have already shown you for construction and all now uh, robots are being used and this is uh, many people are uh, doesn't know about this particular robot this is an exoskeleton robot this is for uh, assisting the humans in order to lift any heavier object or a fragile kind of object and all if you want to lift it okay especially in industrial areas and all if you want to lift these kind of uh, you know heavier object these robots can be fixed on to your body okay like a suit okay like a robotic suit which you can see in the movies and all in science fiction movies and all you can see this right so this is a robot which is in, which is been introduced by hyundai and you can able to hit you know you, you can able to lift some you know tons of uh, weights in a easier manner you can able to assist okay this robots can able to assist you by lifting this so this is also another thing i want to tell you and there is a robot for underwater also this is called box fish okay this is for underwater surveillance and all in most of the areas if you want to surveillance how much species are there okay especially in underwater species and all if you want to surveillance especially in deeper areas and all it is very difficult for the person to go in there okay in those areas these kind of uh, robots can be sent and they can able to monitor the condition okay it can also used for monitor the condition of that particular uh, ocean also the water purity and water level also can be monitored with the help of these kind of robots okay and uh, lastly i want to show you some con- component selection mechanisms because especially if you are carrying out these kind of robotic project we should keep one thing in mind this is very much different from your embedded system okay please uh, don't you know come confuse with the embedded system with the robotics because 
both are doing both are done with the help of some you know, what programming only right so in the embedded system also what you are doing you are connecting some sensors and actuators and you are programming it in robotics also you are connecting these actuators and sensor and you are programming it both are for the same application kind of thing right but the one difference you need to see here is whenever you are selecting the components okay if you are selecting the components in uh, embedded system what will you do you will first select the processor and then you will select the sensors and actuators and finally you will design the power supply unit right but whereas in robotics it should be ulta in robotics always remember the first thing you have to select is the motor okay so which motor is suitable for my application that is one of the most important thing you have to select first whenever you are taking a robotics uh, you know application into picture okay you have lot of different types of motors available for each and every robot especially for pick and place robots and all you need some servo or stepper motor because it is you know angle specific right so it should be turning 30 degree lift the object 25 degree turn the object something like that it should it is very angle specific so if you have any angle specific application we go for only servo or you know these kind of stepper kind of applications so stepper kind of motors have been introduced there okay and if you are focusing on drones the quadcopter kind of thing so there the motor is completely it is not uh, based on angle but it is based on torque and speed in those areas we have to go for some brushless dc or brushless dc okay in those kind of application we have to go for brushless dc motor so so based on the application you are carrying out you have to choose which motor will be suitable for me okay so these motor has to be selected with the help of these points which is mentioned on the slide now torque speed precision and accuracy this precision and accuracy is especially for the surgical application which i have shown you in the previous slides right so the precision accuracy is very much important there and especially for cnc carving machines and all these kind of uh, precision is very important okay if any single mm is missed immediately that whole product will be spoiled okay in those cases and all we have to choose the right motor there okay and many of the companies are coming up with customized motors also yeah, apart from the motors which is available in the market in most of the industries they are coming up with some customized motors for their own applications okay and that is also there and we have to look into the degree of freedoms also okay especially in uh, difference between when you see the servo motor and the dc motor and all there will be some angle of freedom we have to consider there okay especially for surveillance robot and all right so you need to have 360 degrees of surveillance in some areas it will be like 90 degree or there will be in some areas we need only 180 degree kind of surveillance certain okay so in those kind of applications we have to choose which motor will be suitable for us okay and for especially for these kind of you know increasing the speed and torque and all we have to look for some gear arrangements okay there are some lot of techniques to do this gear arrangements and all you have to focus on that area also and the second thing is i want to show you is the motor controller because because the motor cannot be controlled okay directly by any one of the controller or the processor because the motor controlling mechanism is something different okay it should not be combined with your processor okay there should be some isolation between your motor controller and so your motor and your processor always please remember this there should be some isolation or some driving factor should be there in between to control these kind of motors so for that we call it as drivers right in most of your applications and all you could have used this uh, you know one of the conventional driver which is l293 d okay in most of the line follower robots and small kind of robotic application and all you could have used this l293 d right so this is one of the driver which isolates your microcontroller with your motor because motors operating voltage is something different more operating current is something different okay it will be in 12 volt or 24 volt but your microcontroller's voltage will be around 3.3 volt or 5 volt okay you can't able to supply you can't able to drive that motor from your controller okay you need to go for these kind of drivers there okay this drivers not only drives or isolate your circuit it also has one more advantage these drivers can also able to used for direction control of that particular motor also especially for the telepresence robot which i have mentioned you in the previous application right so in that telepresence robot you need to control the direction of the robot also it is not going to only surveillance it is going to be controlled manually or autonomously also right so the wheels has to be turned forward and reverse whenever it is necessary 
so in those kind of applications and all so this microcontroller can send a you know digital signal to this particular uh, driver and this driver can able to drive that particular motor forward or reverse okay can you get my point so this is one of the driver i want to show you and this driver will be varied for each and every motor okay especially the motor which i am showing you here is the brushless dc motor the working mechanism of this brushless dc motor is something different when compared with the brushless dc motor here the whole stator huh? so the, here the always you know this the stator and the rotor right the motor will have two terminals stator and the rotor the rotating part will be called as rotor and the stationary part will be called as the stator right here the rotor part is something on the outside usually you can see in a motor in a normal dc motor the rotating part will be on the center right so here in this brushless dc motor the rotating part will be on the outer area and the stationary part will be on the inner area okay so this operation will be something different okay when compared with brushed dc motor the operation itself is something different here you should you should have some specialized controller for it you should have some specialized driver for it we call it as esc electronic speed controller okay here you can see there will be three terminals running out of it right so these three terminals has to be connected with the three terminals of your brushless dc motor okay and you have to give pulses in a particular sequence a b c something like that okay these three terminals has to be energized with three different signals something like a b c so if you do in a right sequence only the motor will start to rotate okay so something like this so you can see here the uh, rotatory part is at the outside as i told you before and the inner part is stationary okay so the inner part is uh, having the electromagnet and the outer part is having the permanent magnet okay so this electromagnet part na the inner part it will be supplied with this abc sequence i told you na there will be two terminals so, sorry there will be three terminals for your bldc motor right so these three terminals will be getting this abc kind of sequencing signals okay so based on that signals only the poles are formed the north and south poles are formed in this particular electromagnet so immediately once this poles are formed on the electromagnet the permanent magnet poles are getting attracted towards it okay this is how a brushless dc motor works okay in order to give this sequence you need to go for a specialized escs it will not be it cannot be given with the help of l293 d and all okay so these signals has to be given in a faster rate because uh, especially this bldc motors are used for you know drawn kind of applications so if in drawn imagine the speed of the motors will be in uh, you know uh, 10000s to 12000 even in lakhs uh, rpms and all the motors will be rotating right so in that speed the sequence has to be delivered so for those applications and all these kind of escs has to be used and don't consider motors alone there are some uh, you know devices for having the linear motion and all in most of the robotics platform only the circular motion will not be sufficient you need to go for some linear motion also say for example in modular kitchen and all you could have seen some digitalized kitchens and all so there will be some uh, you know uh, tray which will be coming uh, out of it okay, out from that particular shelf okay automatically when the person comes near to it a shelf will be pushing out a tray and it will be monitoring each and every you know packages which you are putting inside it okay in those kind of areas and you know, all linear actuators are the ones which is being used there it can able to push lot amount of weight okay here the uh, linear actuator which i am showing you here is uh, it will be costlier which is based on the length okay how much length it has to come out say for example if it is having 100 cm it will be having some cost okay it is purely based on cost only you have to choose the linear actuator okay and uh, the last thing is the sensor selection okay especially for your application you have lot of different sensors available in the market especially in the module like structure in the past years and all it will be just sensor but now it is a smart sensor you will be having a module in that you can able to have a acquisition unit filtering unit as well as amplification unit and also a communication unit all the units can be implemented in a single module itself so it is beautiful uh, thing which is happening now in most of the markets these kind of modules are available you can directly implant it on your robots whenever it's necessary so here one thing i want to mention you is in most of the telepresence robot or something like that some humanoid kind of robots and all one uh, sensor is very much uh, you know popular which is ultrasonic sensor 
okay that is used for obstacle avoidance and all right so that sensor and all is there and uh, especially for the robot which i have shown you the police bot the cheetah i told you na so in order to know the position of its okay whenever it is trying to fall down it needs to know the position of that particular uh, particular current position right so those areas and all we will be using some accelerometer and gyroscope kind of sensors okay and there is one more sensor for uh, this quadcopter and all which we call it as time of flight okay that is a, a kind of sensor which is uh, having the capability to sense which is what is around it okay so what is around it so anything is coming near to it or something like that it can able to sense by itself so you have lot of different sensors now and uh, especially in uh, texas instruments and all lot of researches are happening in especially in uh, uh, creating the mem sensors and all okay so if you have time just google it and you have lot of uh, ieee papers also also available just uh, look into it okay and finally after selecting all these peripherals only you have to select the microprocessor okay this is the difference between a embedded system and a robotics okay in robotics always the microprocessor and the controller has to be selected at last only okay so based on the adc whatever the sensors you are, you are connecting and whatever the precisions you need what is the accuracy you need based on the adc only you have to select these kind of processors and you have to select the pro processor with uh, the available modules say for example whether it has the pwm module okay whether it has the ppm module in it whether it has the can kind of protocol in it okay so those kind of features you have to see before selecting these kind of processors and controllers and these processors and controllers can be programmed in lot of other manners like python c hash c sharp or c++ or matlab okay so you have lot of programming tools to program it so you have to choose the right programming tool so say for example if you are focusing on combining this artificial intelligence with robotics what i would suggest is go for python okay instead of going for c++ and c sharp just go for python because you have lot of uh, you know inbuilt libraries are available okay and lot of powerful processors have come which can support this python okay especially like jetson nano and all okay you know what is jetson uh, kind of boards right so especially in most of your laptops you can see the nvi dia the term called nvi dia right so that is a graphical processing company so that company has introduced one of the beautiful gpu called nvidia nvidia jetson okay so this jetson has lot of series in it you can able to program this jetson with the help of python and you can do whatever the robotics application or artificial intelligence kind of application in a very faster manner you can do it okay so very powerful processor has come especially for python kind of applications and all so my suggestion would be go for python and if you are focusing on analyzing kind of thing so you have lot of datas from the sensors and you want to analyze what is the flaw there or what what is the new thing you can add there so for those kind of research kind of application you can go for matlab or kind of thing okay so and don't go for matlab if you are focusing on you know real time products because only for analysis you can keep the matlab for implementing or deploying it on some application you can you can go for python or c++ or something like that okay don't go for matlab in those cases okay so that is what i i would suggest because in most of my uh, you know researches and most of the products which i did i have done it in python it is very reliable to use okay and if you have any uh, you know grievances whenever you are doing your own projects okay you can contact me at any time because uh, my science incubation center is doing the thing because Uh, we are uh, you know incubating the product ideas okay if you have any ideas with you and if you don't know how to implement it how to take it into a product or how to convert it into a product you can call me at any time i can help you i can assist you with that we can give a any technical training and we are working on domains like embedded system iot pcb designing and even artificial intelligence drone kind of technologies also we are focusing on now now we are focusing on this brain computer interface also 